With me, Mazlina Ismail, Alhamdulillah, we are in this program, Great Works of the Muslim World, in the second episode. Alhamdulillah, we'll be sharing um, another figure or another great works uh, in the Muslim world. And we have with us once again to explain or to share with us, Muhammad Husni, Muhammad Amin, Senior Research Officer, IKIM Center for Science and Environment Studies, or short as KIAS. Assalamualaikum, Husni. Waalaikumsalam, Mas. How are, How are you? Are you? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for uh, joining us again. Uh, thank you for inviting. Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, um, this week uh, you propose to discuss or to share on our next uh, figure, uh, yes. which is Imam Al Suyuti's Gateway to the Quranic Sciences. So uh, you, you know, shared a little with me. You said that Imam Jaluddin Al Suyuti was a 16th century Egyptian scholar, historian, and jurist. He was an authority of Shafi'i Mazhab, who also wrote a biographical dictionary which contains valuable accounts of prominent figures in the early development of Arabic philology. Wow. So now, could you tell us more about his background? Please, thanks. Yes, I am the Shaitan and Rajim, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin, wa salatu salam ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursaleen wa ala al-wasabi ajma'in. Uh, thank you, Gilman Mas, to invite me to this lovely program. So, uh, in this week's uh, episode, we're going to talk about uh, Imam Jalaluddin Asyuti, uh, and he was a uh, 16th century uh, Imam uh, who was born uh, in 1445 AD in Cairo, in Egypt, and uh, he hailed from a Persian family on his paternal side. But his mother was a uh, Circassian, a uh, Circassian also uh, European uh, stock, meaning uh, he may have some uh, Mamluk uh, uh, heritage to him. So uh, according to Suyuti himself, uh, his ancestors came from Khuderia in uh, Baghdad. The reason why uh, his, his uh, Nisbah was called uh, Suyuti is because uh, although his ancestors were from Baghdad in Iraq, his family uh, settled in Asyut in Egypt, uh, hence his Nisbah Asuyuti, meaning uh, somebody who came from Asyut. Uh, so the remarkable thing about Imam Suyuti is that he has studied uh, a broad range of uh, knowledge, uh, fields of knowledge in Shafi'i and Hanafi uh, fiqh, uh, two madhab, usually uh, people, normal people, they study only the madhab they are born into or the madhab of the area where uh, it is accessible to scholars of that particular madhab. But uh, uh, he also learned tradition, uh, hadith, he learned uh, exegesis, uh, tafsir Quran, theology, usuluddin, He's also a historian. He read, he wrote a book on history, which I will uh, later may, maybe mm -hmm. mention. Yeah. Uh, also on rhetoric, balagha, uh, the eloquence of, of talking, philosophy uh, on and on philology, the, the philosophy of language, on arithmetic. Surprisingly, uh, he's good with uh, mathematics as well. On timekeeping, uh, miqat and also some medicines. Uh, there is a book called Tib Nabawi, mm -hmm. attributed to Jalalina Suyuti. And uh, he, unfortunately, he lost his parents way when he was small, uh, at least his father, when he was just six years old. But uh, because of his uh, extraordinary life, uh, mm -hmm. uh, he began teaching Shafi'i jurisprudence at the age of 18. Mm -hmm. uh, so imagine what you and me were doing uh, <laughs> when we were just uh, 18, we just finished uh, SPM yes. uh, examination and maybe going into matriculation. So uh, according to the 17th, 17th century Syrian historian by the name of Ibn uh, Imad, Suyuti works became famous during his lifetime because uh, normally uh, uh, great scholars, even like Imam Ghazali, uh, his works became famous only later after his death that people become genuinely interested uh, yeah. that his works uh, become seminal. So uh, according to Ibn Imad also, Asuyuti was foremost scholar of the Hadith and associated uh, sciences, the uh, Ulumul Hadith uh, and uh, also 
uh, he was uh, known to be narrating uh, also from narrations from uncommon uh, narrators. Uh, he, he is learned in the hadith, in the matan text, and he's skilled in determining isnat or chain of narrators uh, in deriving uh, hadith uh, rulings. So uh, many of his major works, because he has studied exegesis, uh, he has work called Tafsir Jalalain, mm-hmm. uh, the commentary of the two Jalal, meaning the other uh, Jalaluddin who shared his name. So some other compiler combined these two Tafsir of the Quran and right. made them into Tafsir Jalalain. Jalalain meaning two Jalals. Right. Uh, so, so the other Jalal was his teacher Jalaluddin Al Mahalli. So it is com- this work combined uh, student and uh, teacher together in one in one uh, work. Right. And the other work of his is Al Itqan fi Ulum al Quran, uh, which we can translate as the perfect guide to the sciences of the Quran. A tib Nabawi, as I said before, as a prophetic medicine, how the, the Prophet used to treat himself. Jami al Kabir and Jami al Saghir. These two are uh, fiqh works on jurisprudence. And also Al Fiyah al Hadith, another work on Hadith, Tadrib al Rawi. On, on hadith terminologies. And uh, as I've said before, Mas, uh, mm-hmm. he's known to be a historian. He has a work on history called uh, Tarikh Khulafa, a history of the caliphs. Right. And uh, this work has been translated in, into English as the Khalifas who took the right way. It's, mm-hmm. it's a partial translation of the history of caliph, of uh, Tarikh Khulafa. And uh, it covers four first, uh, first four Rashidun caliphs, including... Mm-hmm. Uh, Sina Hassan ibn Ali radiyallahu an, and also uh, he has got to his name Tabakat al Hufas, which is uh, a dictionary of biographies of the Hufas, people who memorize uh, the Hufas, which bring us uh, to what we're discussing today on uh, Quranic uh, sciences and uh, several other works that he had produced. Uh, for example, the two last works that I want to mention here is Khasais al Kubra, which discusses the miracles of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and another work on linguistics called Al Muzhir. So mm-hmm. that's a, a bit of his background, a mar- remarkable uh, yes. figure of the 16th century. Very impressive, from medicine to history to you know dictionary. Yeah. It's okay from what you shared with us just now. Which book? Yeah. Um, from those mentioned is gateway to the Quranic sciences, Husni. Yeah, yeah. So uh, from the list that I've just mentioned to you, um, it is the Al Itqan fi Ulum al Quran, which uh, some other author, uh, translator Omar Hussein, has translated into uh, the perfect, uh, the gateway uh, to the Quranic uh, sciences. It's called gateway because it serves to be an introductory work on the very sciences of the Quran, uh, which we will enumerate uh, later. So, so this work that I am referring to, and also it has been a bridge to make it uh, more accessible to uh, contemporary uh, readers. I think mm-hmm. this is uh, one that is, has been done quite nicely by Omar Hossein. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about the content or the chapters contained in the book? Yeah, so uh, there are 14 chapters uh, in this book and because it is the science of the Quran, it encompasses not only physical science but also knowledge and uh, it is known to be a little more Quran because it includes many uh, subjects about uh, nature and order of revelation, wahyu, explanation of types of expressions. So it is one of the leading comprehensive manuals on uh, Quranic sciences, very useful for people who are just starting to learn about uh, the Quran and are interested to know more about the sacred text. So they have, as I said, there are 14 chapters inside there. Uh, it talks about etiquette and uh, virtues, covering the origins of the Quran and the, those who people who study the Quran, the reciters, the Qura, the grammarians, the nuha, the exegetes, the mufassirun and the legal theoreticians, uh, Usuliyun. So the Qari, they, uh, they derive from this work uh, many benefits about the, the sciences of reciting uh, the Qur'an. 
and the various uh, rules pertaining to uh, the rules, the tajwid of the, the the proper recitation of the Quran, and also the adab, the etiquette when dealing with the Quran. First, it talks about how uh, the the text must be approached, the book must be approached with uh, with with. Uh, mm-hmm. Respect and honor. Uh, you must take ablution first, mm-hmm. and then put it where it should be. The Quran mushaf should be put, mm-hmm. and then it talks about uh, uh, with niyat, with the right intention of reciting, reciting the Quran, and then uh, it talks about the many virtues of reciting the Quran. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, how many uh, blessings one can derive from you know, reciting the Quran with mm-hmm. uh, tartil, with uh, attention. Mm-hmm. With uh, seeking, mm-hmm. yes, uh, and and teach, and seeking mm. to understand the mm. meaning of the Quran in the sincerest uh, manner, yes. and also uh, and and also reciting the Quran with a beautiful voice mm-hmm. as a way of showing adapt to the speech of of God, and then uh, he talks about uh, how the Quran is related to the the language of the Arabs, uh, they are covering also. Non-Arabic words in the Quran, uh, Mu'arrab. We have to understand that uh, in the fifth, sixth century, when the Quran was just being revealed to the Prophet, to the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they were in between two great empires of Rome and Persia, and the world is turning into uh, is fast becoming globalized. Right. Uh, people got to know that there are many nations uh, outside of their own uh, locality and region. So these words are also uh, available in the, uh, the in the Arabic language, and uh, they are mentioned uh, words like uh, uh, words like uh, Firdaus, or the word for the highest uh, level of paradise. Uh, after one dies, uh, if one is uh, has many good deeds to it, uh, it's uh, granted by God Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to go to the highest. Uh, to the highest level of paradise, the name Firdaus is also appeared yeah. in Persian texts uh, before the advent of Islam, and also many other loan words from from Farsi, from Abyssinia, from Nabat, and uh, it mentions also the Quran, uh, its nature as the sacred revelation. Uh, if you read history in the ninth century. There was a debate between uh, the createdness or the uncreatedness uh, of the Quran, whether it is mm-hmm. a creation or it is is it a speech of God, mm-hmm. and this was uh, even uh, one of the great imams of jurisprudence, Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal, defended his position yeah. to say that it is just uh, it is uh, not just, but it is the speech of God, uh, and to impute otherwise mm-hmm. uh, it is wrong. And and then he talks about the the process, the gradual uh, revelation, the wisdom behind mm. the gradual revelation of the Quran. You know, ten thirteen years in Mecca and ten years in uh, Medina, yeah. and how the history of the Quran, uh, the Quran is categorized into Makki and Madani mm. uh, surah uh, because. Uh, so he talks about how the verses which were revealed in Mecca they were short. Versus, because in order to facilitate uh, the early Muslims, the nascent Muslim society, for them to be able to memorize uh, right. the Quran easily, right. and and when they were they have migrated to Medina, then the verses mm-hmm. become longer because these verses uh, were concerned with legislation, jurisprudence, how right. Muslims uh, should carry out their daily lives, and also. How should they enact their uh, laws, the Islamic laws, right. and uh, so there are many other mm-hmm. explanations on on that Imam Suti gave on recitation, on learning and memorizing the Quran, on yeah. the decisive and allegorical versus the muhkamat and the mutashabihat uh, versus of the Quran, the muhkamat which later became. The part of the 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 governing principles of the Sharia, so it must be clear uh, uh, about uh, the uh, many aspect, the legal dimensions of the Sharia. For example, in marriage laws, how long should uh, a person after after divorce, how long should they wait before they are able to uh, remarry? 
uh, and then talking about allegorical verses which could be interpreted in in several ways by mm-hmm. the scholars the mutashabihat uh, verses yeah. and then uh, covering also about tafsir how should one approach the matter of interpreting the quran the skills and knowledge which one must possess in order to be able to uh, get to the right meanings uh, that the quran uh, brings forth to muslims and also uh, who were the exegetes the, the early exegetes people like uh, ibn abbas uh, ibn mas'ud and then uh, talking about the abrogation in the quran which verses have been abrogated by other so no longer could apply uh, in situations today but uh, has been abrogated with me meaning has been superseded by uh, other verses so these are the main discussions of the book uh, that we know mm-hmm. to be gateway to the quranic sciences or al itqan fi ulum al quran right uh, quite um you know comprehensive and yeah. impressive because there's so much we can learn from that book and yeah. i believe that you know it gives more meaning when we read the quran by knowing the etiquette like you said the adab and also yeah. the historical part and the wisdom yeah. uh, that you know a lot of, of things that we haven't really understand about uh, understood about quran so inshallah probably you would like to conclude um, or you want to share further on uh, or encourage actually people to read on the book Yeah, uh, so uh, this book is not too thick. Uh, we can mm. say that uh, this abridgment is only about uh, 145 uh, pages. It's really handy. Mm. Uh, uh, so, so I say that I dare say that the translator has done a really, really good job in abridging it and taking the the important, uh, the salient points of this uh, work, and also talking about. Uh, well we can understand like like you said uh, must the miracle of the quran yeah. uh, we can understand that uh, how god's promise uh, that uh, the quran comes from him and he will uh, protect it inna nazalna qur'ana wa inna lahu lahafizun he promised this this in the quran so it's uh, it comes to well it's no surprise but also in the same time we are amazed we are one we are uh, struck with wonder that how can a sacred text like the quran mm-hmm. uh, have survived the uh, time uh, about uh, for more than now coming to 15th century that it remain the same because uh, we according to the sciences of the quran and then uh, that the muslims have always have had uh, who fast people who protect uh, the quran with their hearts they re- they memorize and they make sure that so so at any point of time there are more than 10 million uh, hufaz in the whole world so they uh, cross check with other uh, in recitation in reading make sure that uh, and and this is taking into account also the various styles uh, the sab'a ahruf in the manner that the quran was uh, revealed so despite we find some variations in recitation uh, of the quran it remained the same uh, the same text that all muslims uh, refer to so this attests to the miracle that uh, god set uh, in the quran so uh, that's the conclusion that i can give uh, right now mas right thank you very much husni um Welcome. that's about what we shared on this week al itqan fi ulum al quran did i say it right fi ulum al quran ulum al quran yes yes or the gateway to the quranic sciences which yeah. is one of the leading comprehensive manuals of the sciences of the quran written by the Tower in 16th century uh, Egyptian scholar and religious reviver or mujaddid Imam Jalaluddin As-Suyuti and um, inshallah we hope that uh, this will inspire you to uh, venture into more on uh, great works of the Muslim world to learn more I mean and to read on uh, a lot of um, prominent figures that we haven't uh, known so inshallah uh, next week we will share uh, on the next one Yes, uh, I think we will go into uh, the sciences of hadith. We will talk about uh, Imam An-Nawawi. Mm. Uh, yes, inshallah. Yes, yeah, so inshallah, uh, until we meet again next week. Thank you very much once again, Husni. You're welcome. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.